In this video, I'm going to show you how I turn ideas into products and products into profit using 3D printing as the exclusive method of manufacturing. My name is Taylor and I run a company called YGK3D. In the past month, we've generated over $10,000 in revenue selling our 3D printed products on Etsy. Unlike most other print sellers, 95% of what we sell are original designs. Today, I'm going to walk you through the design process for our newest product. So you too can learn how to create original designs that are optimized for sale. This won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but rather a high-level overview of the thought process and the workflow. Whenever I'm designing a new product, I try to keep two things in mind. Ease of manufacturing and saleability. In other words, it needs to be easy to produce on a 3D printer, and it should be something that people want to buy. On the table in front of me are four products I've designed, but only two of these are things I would actually sell. Stay tuned to find out which is which and why. If you find value in today's video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. I have a goal of reaching 10,000 subscribers by my one year channel anniversary in February of 2024, and would really mean a lot to have you along for the journey. Okay, so first things first, we need an idea. When brainstorming new ideas, I often find inspiration in my day-to-day -day life. But other times I see something online and I think, hmm, that's cool, but I could do it better. Or more specifically, 3D printing could do it better. In this case, I came across this really cool Santa chimney advent calendar. This particular version was designed for laser cutting. And while I have a laser cutter, I find laser cutting is not the method of manufacturing I like to use for my products. For this product in particular, there would be a lot of individual pieces that would need to be glued together and painted, which are two things I try to avoid at all costs. So I wanted to redesign this for 3D printer. A quick Google search showed that this idea was not at all original. There are many interpretations of this design, but none of them stood out to me as a clear winner. And most importantly, there weren't any mass manufacturer versions available on the likes of Amazon or other major retailers. In contrast, this basketball net garbage can wouldn't make a great product because it's already mass manufactured using injection molding and sold for cheap. Similarly, Christmas tree lamps are also available on the market already, though they're typically made from ceramic. So unless you can compete on cost, it really doesn't make sense to make either of these products using 3D printing. So we have an idea. Now, how do we turn that into a product? Well, I have two workflows that I typically like to use. One is in Blender and the other is in Fusion 360. For this design, since it's a hard edged model with specific dimensions required, I decided the Fusion 360 would be the logical choice. So let's hop on the computer and I'll run you through the design. I won't dwell on the small details, but I'll stop to highlight the key points. I started by taking a picture of my own fireplace to use as a design reference. I imported the image as a canvas in Fusion, then started roughing in the primitive shapes. I'll define the scale by constraining the width, then focus on proportionality rather than explicit dimensions. With the overall shape defined, I extruded it to add depth. I added another sketch plane, then drew a rectangle to define the width of the columns and used the revolve tool to make them cylindrical. The ability to directly edit your models without redefining the sketches is one of the strong points of Fusion 360. The offset face command can be used to push or pull faces in order to alter the geometry. I used it to make the sidewalls flush with the cylindrical columns. We have the rough shape. Now it's time to add some of the ornamental details. I define a series of planes at various heights, then use the split body command to cut up the model. This will allow me to push and pull the individual sections. Next, I'll make a new sketch on top and hit P on my keyboard to project the pre-existing geometry into the sketch. I can then add new lines and have them connect to the existing ones. I'll draw a single circle, then use the circular pattern tool to create multiple copies, spaced at even increments. I'll then mirror them across the center line to save me from having to draw them twice. Hit E to extrude, operation cut, extend all. Now I'll use the combine tool to put everything back together. Sketch in the last few ornamental details, extrude them, and that's it for now on the fireplace. A basic rectangle for the chimney, and a whole bunch of lines for the bricks. I'm going to copy and paste the sketch elements, rather than redrawing them every time. I want these lines to have thickness. I could draw another set of lines in order to accomplish this, but that would be tedious. Instead, I'll switch to the surface interface. I want to select the lines, not the sketch profiles. So I'll open the select options and make sure only sketch curves is ticked. If you're ever trying to select something in Fusion and having trouble, this is the way to do it. With the lines selected, I'll extrude them. 
The magic of surfaces is that I can use the thicken command to easily give all the lines a prescribed thickness. I'll then use the body as a cutting tool to remove the material from the chimney. The same procedure was used to add bricks on the sides too. So we have a fireplace and a chimney. Now we need jolly old Saint Nick. I'm not a graphic designer, so I'm going to borrow someone else's talents for this. I found an image of Santa online and converted each color to a separate SVG, which I then imported into Fusion. I'll extrude each color to give it thickness. I want this to be a layered design so that it can be printed using manual filament changes. So I'm adding an offset to the extrusions so the pieces are stacked. I used the render interface to add colors to the components, which will help with visualization. Speaking of components, these are useful for keeping your designs organized. Rather than new body, select new component when extruding multiple profiles. If you want to add bodies to a component, right click and select move to, then select the bodies folder within the desired component. Santa was way too large, so I selected all of the bodies and scaled them down. I made Santa a reasonable size, then realized the chimney was too small, so I scaled it up. Next, I sketched the slots for the horizontal bars that will be used for the countdown, cut them out of the chimney, and added a wider section on top. At this point, I realized that I should have hollowed the chimney before cutting the bar slots, so I moved back the timeline to before I had made the cuts. This is another hugely beneficial feature of Fusion, the ability to roll back your design to any previous point in its progression. I added a sketch on top, then cut all the way down to the fireplace. We want to be able to see Santa as he descends, so I also cut away the front. I drew the profile for the bars next, leaving 0.2 millimeters of clearance on each edge for a loose fit. Incorporating tolerances into your design is critical for proper functionality. Next, I added numbers to keep track of the days. I tried mirroring them, but they ended up backwards, so I copied and pasted the sketch instead. In order to see what's happening behind the scenes, it's super useful to reduce the opacity of certain bodies. I wanted to add a base to Santa, so he'd ride in a track all the way down and not fall out the front. I drew the profile, then cut it out. Unfortunately, this cut breaks the continuity of the bridging across the bar holes, making this unprintable, or at least not cleanly. This type of printability constraint is something I'm always thinking about as I design. I'm trying to reduce the prominence of overhangs and eliminate any features that would require support material. Sometimes it helps to export the model and import it into the slicer to see any potential issues. All right, back to the drawing board. Rather than a thin slot, I put Santa on a wider base. That should work. Next, I added fillets to round out the sharp edges and eliminate the overhangs. There's still some pretty long bridges, but I think they should be okay. We could lay the model down on its back, but that would introduce other issues while also filling up the build plate much quicker. It's critical to keep in mind the intended printing orientation when designing, splitting things into parts where necessary to make printing easier. I'm going to end up splitting the fireplace from the chimney, so they can be printed at a larger scale without maxing out the build volume. Next, I started working on the stockings. I found a suitable image that was free to use, converted it to an SVG, then imported it to Fusion. I extruded the red and white into two separate components, using the layered design approach again. I struggled for quite a while with how I would attach the stockings to the fireplace. I didn't want to use pegs and holes because I wanted the design to be scalable. A predetermined number of holes means a predetermined number of stockings, with defined spacing. It wouldn't work to put four stockings if the hole pattern was for five, because then they wouldn't be centered. I decided that I would make a track system instead. I drew the profile and cut it out, being careful not to create any unnecessary overhangs. I designed a small hook that would press fit into the back of the stockings and slide in the track. I made sure to add the appropriate tolerances here too. As a final step, I separated the chimney from the fireplace before exporting all of the individual components. Bamboo Studio is my slicer of choice. The multi-plate functionality is incredibly convenient for laying out your designs. I imported all of the components, duplicated them where necessary, and assigned colors. I'll be printing these on my Bamboo Lab printers with AMSs for automated filament swapping. Despite that, I specifically designed all of the multicolor parts for fixed layer transitions. This will make these designs compatible with any printer. It's also more efficient and reduces material waste versus swapping colors on every layer. With everything settled, it was off to the printers.
The prints turned out surprisingly well on the first attempt. The one issue I observed was that the stockings didn't stay in place very well. In order to resolve this, I tweaked the design to add a retaining piece on top. I put some super glue on the interface between the fireplace and chimney, added names to the stockings, and assembled the rest of the components. Everything was looking nice. I thought I was done, until my wife suggested that I needed a fire in the fireplace. I found this image online, isolated all of the colors in Photoshop, and exported them separately, then converted to SVGs and imported these into Fusion, repeating the procedure I used for Santa and the stockings. And that's it for the design. Christmas! So there you have it, a brand new product. It's not original in its conception, but it's unique in its implementation, to a significant enough degree that I think it will stand out against the competition. With a product of this size and this many individual components, producing this on demand just wouldn't make sense. Therefore, I prefer to batch produce this type of product in quantities of at least 10, keeping them in inventory until an order comes through. I actually think this is one of the cutest things I've ever designed. It's pretty satisfying to use. And I'm sure my family is going to love it for years to come. It's definitely going to be a new holiday tradition. If you like this model or any of the other models you see here, you can download them on our Patreon page. By subscribing, you not only help support the production of these videos, but you gain access to a catalog of high quality 3D printable models that we're constantly adding to. Not only that, but you also have commercial selling rights. So if you are a print seller and you do want to make a profit, you are more than welcome to sell our models. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something here today. If you did, let me know down in the comments what your biggest takeaway is. While you're down there, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. I have a really exciting one coming up where I show how I paid for this printer in one week and everything I needed to print with it in order to accomplish that. So you don't want to miss it. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, until next time, happy 3D printing.